today's vibrational good, please connect us to the Reiki Masters, the Ascendant Masters, Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Katumi, Yamoja, Oshun, Mawo, and all the Taras. Please connect us to the Archangel Spirit, Guide Spirit, Animals, our Lineage, and all of our highest vibrational good only, rooting us down in our individual healing experience and bringing us forward as a community. I say all of this in the name of I am Ashe. 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 So, I'm just going to go through 
universe and all for the highest vibrational good only. Please connect us to our highest intentions and validate information from our highest self only. Please release what we need to let go and embrace what allows us to grow. Let our journey encompass the lineages, traditions, religions, and spiritual paths that bring light out to us to share with the others. I say all of this in the name of I am. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. And understanding the power of I am. Because what you say you are is powerful. When you say you're strong, you're wise, you're resilient, you become that. When you say you're not those things, you become that too. So that's why we say it in the name of I am. Because you grow, create the life you want and you decide what path you go on, okay? No one can decide that for you, okay, sweetness. So let's get into it. Healthy love. So inhale, exhale. And let's just cleanse out any love that isn't for your highest vibrational good. Or just, it's ready. It's ready to move on, okay? The love is maybe old, old versions that maybe it was for you then, but it's not for you now. So let's move that out, okay? And remove that.
focus in and appreciate those who really are very lovely in your life and to release and to let go of those who maybe need to do a little bit more work but that, ain't, that don't have nothing to do with you and they make it be about you but it has nothing to do with you let them let them go <laughs> let them go do their work on their own okay good job now bringing back into this beautiful healthy love start to notice the people in your life that have those same qualities and why you love them so much understand your dynamics with them why is it that it works so well and start to lean into that energy more start to ask the universe to bring you those types of examples of love okay romantic friends family all of those things all of those things all of those things all of those things and let's just Sit there. 
shifts in your energy. Allow yourself to be <laughs> recalibrated for your highest good, you know? And just center yourself. Center yourself. Center, 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 center yourself in ways that are for your growth and your happiness and your peace. You deserve Mysticism. 
this up and specifically with manifesting I think it is so so lovely this is a time where like the world is literally your oyster you can do whatever the fuck you want to do it is gonna work out but as we have left this Capricorn energy and I was talking about Capricorn for like fucking two years <laughs> when we are leaving this Capricorn energy we are going to Aquarius energy which I am now ranting about mostly um, and that energy is different because it is about understanding how discipline, how discomfort plays a role in your overall success for what you want in life, meaning the future that you want, this dream life. Uh, a lot of people would like to just kind of like open their eyes and like, oh, I'm in my dream life. But isn't it more empowering to know that you have 100% control of bringing that dream life you want into your actual life? All you have to do is be okay with being uncomfortable enough to not know everything and just step out there so that means learning something new like for example language learning if you want to learn a new language there's a lot of discomfort around that um because you just don't know especially if you're really great at some other language and to be like you know in very much so the foundational elementary kind of stages it can be difficult and that can deter someone to do something but think about it like this you master a language and then that opens up a whole new world for you so the more of the story and what is kind of the foundation of what we're doing today in this manifesting session is that if you are okay and you learn how to live with the discomfort you will be able to work that magical ability together to be able to manifest anything you want in your life period <laughs> okay so I have some shivalingam. This is a stone for fertility, uh, a stone for abundance and bringing in. Uh, it can also be a stone for creativity if you ever have writer's block in some type of way. This is a wonderful stone for that. So I'm going to start by tracing the body. Now we start the session off with a prayer. It is not a religious prayer. It is just a prayer to connect us to our individual healing experiences and bring us together as a community. And because consent matters, do I have your permission to say a prayer? Okay. Dear Mother, Father, God, and all for the highest vibrational good, please connect us to the Reiki Masters, the Ascendant Masters, Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Katumi, Yamonja, Oshun, Mawu, and all the Taras. Please connect us to the Archangels, the Spirit Guides, Spirit Animals, our lineage, and all for our highest vibrational good only, rooting us down in our individual healing experience and bringing us forth as a community. I say all of this in the name of I am, Ashe, 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 and I encourage you, uh, implore you to rewrite the prayer. Bring your spirit guides in, bring your uh, spiritual traditions in, and add that to the prayer as we say the prayer so that it connects to you. It is not necessary that we are all saying the exact same words. No, 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 no. It makes more sense that it, you infuse what you actually believe and what actually resonates with you. And as you are learning more, if you want to add things into it, you do that. That's on you. But we are not, you know, this monolith and we need to do things this one way. No, not at all. You are amazing. You are spectacular. You have a specific outlook in life that is perfect for you. You don't need to um, change that. 
Saturn period. Saturn is the planet of discipline. Saturn embodies Capricorn and Saturn embodies Aquarius. So Aquarius is both a, a perfect balance between um, the logical and the spiritual. So you can have and manifest anything you want in this life, but you have to put in the work period. There's, no, there's, there's just no way to get around it. And there's nothing wrong with putting in the work because that is our connection to each other. Having to do things in the physical experience. So, I'm going to go and bring in a bit of this yellow calcite that looks a bit orange for confidence, okay? So, in this moment, I want you to have the confidence you need. that you want to manifest, what is this dream life that you want, and bring it to both your heart and your solar plexus, your solar plexus is right under your heart, it's like um, where the tip of your ribs meet, like that area, so technically your heart, the center of your chest, your navel is uh, your sacral, and in between those, in between those, would be hypothetically be um, your solar plexus. I always aim for that area where the uh, ribs start to join at the bottom because that is also where your chi is stored. That is um, that digestive system as well. The microbiome is 70% uh, of our immune system. So it's a lot of important things in that area. So that's why we're working energetic, energetically there in order to feed you energetically, feed your soul, feed you on a spiritual level, feed you on an energetic level, or whatever it is you're looking for, that's your business, okay? So I want you to breathe in whatever goal you got, okay? And I want you, I'm going to just slightly place this right there on the chest, and I want you to feel the energy just being absorbed into you so that you're able to easily just feel motivated to feel in charge to not feel intimidated you know like you know that things will be difficult you know that it'll be a challenge but you're not intimidated by it you're like you're bringing the fuck on I'm ready for this <laughs> You know, it's very clear. You've done the work. You've done the internal work, internal questioning, internal growth. That was a lot of 2020, but now it is time to actually make the difference that you want to see in the world. It's time to show up and just be you and go after what you want. And the first level is never being intimidated by others, meaning like you don't want people to see you not be good at something or you don't want people to see you struggle. Fuck that. Let, uh, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Okay. You don't have to be perfect. You can fuck it up the whole way. Okay. But just as long as you're working towards something, that is the point. And it's a humbling and lovely experience to be able to, uh, uh, be so far along in your path, but still be able to grow into something because there's so much of life still to live, right? You want to feel like in 10 years, you think about today, you're like, oh, that was the first day I, you know, put myself out there. And then 10 years from now, you're going to want to do something else new so that you can still be like, you know, childlike forever. So there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So don't worry about what other people think because it is those people who don't mind to humble themselves that really get to where they want to go. That's number one. Number two, when you hit walls, challenges, obstacles, things are mentally tough. It's just like this shit is not fucking working out. Breathe through it. Just breathe through it. It's the same principle of the discomfort. And the reason why I say breathe through it is because I guarantee you, my grandma used to say, there ain't nothing new under the sun. Whatever problem you have, I'm, I'm so certain that you're probably not the first person in humanity to ever have the problem. You're the first you experiencing the problem in this particular lifetime. But, you know, people have found a way to get over it. So I want you to look out and find the solution to the problem you have. I want you to look out there and find the solution to the problem you have 
source, whatever, um, that feels most com comfortable and comforting to you, you can look at it like that. They say, let go and let God, period. And you have to have enough faith in this big, beautiful, unconditional energy to know that you can take a leap. You know, you're ready. You got it. You can do it. You can take a leap and it's going to be just fine. If you're not, um, if you're not religious or monotheistic or something like that, you're much more spiritual or you're just something else or you don't believe in anything at all, um, for the spiritual path, I would say connect with your energetic helpers, your spiritual helpers. So this can be your archangels, spirit guides, spirit animals. Um, this can be Orisha work. Uh, this can be um, planetary work. Some, pe some people have a very strong connection to when I say planets, I mean like you might have a lot of Mercury in your chart. You must have a lot of Mars in your chart. So you have to balance your energy with those kind of things. Or if you just don't believe in anything, um, but you kind of just exist, then just trust that, you know, this invisible threat that's been keeping you together this whole time is going to continue to keep you together. I tell you all the time, I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm here to empower you to live the life you want, to heal from these things that are tough, both emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, and not feel hindered by those blockages in life to be able to have whatever life you want. And so this is definitely a part of the process to getting there, okay? So I want you to write in the comment section if you haven't fallen asleep what that goal is that you want, what life do you want? I'm so excited to read that and to see what you all really want because I think it is so important to share that with each other because when you share your dream, others feel empowered to share theirs and it just goes on and on and on and on, okay? Beautiful. You're doing a fantastic job. Well, family, I hope you enjoy.
reaches out to me and she says to me, <laughs> she said, I think you should tap on Legos. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> she said, I heard they love that. They love it. They love when you tap on, like people on the internet will love if you tap on Legos. And I was just sweetest thing ever. 
see it in the perspective of making sure that your energy is balanced, but making sure you understand what your values are. And many people do not know what their values are at all. They don't know. They never thought about it. And so if you want to have the, the love you're seeking, start to ask yourself some questions. Where do I see myself long-term in a relationship? What do you want? And then you might be like, oh, you know, you may or may not want kids. You may or may not want to be married. You want to have this and you da 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 So take a step back and think, does my partner have to live up to the criteri criteria of my family? This is important because I'm getting somewhere with this one. Okay, yes or no? Oh, yeah, they gotta really, you know, um, my parents have to love them. If they don't like it, my siblings don't love them, my cousins don't love them. You know, it's not gonna work. What about your friends? You know, oh, no, no, they gotta be really good with my friends. Da -da 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 -da. My friends don't like them. What about colleagues? Some people really, you know, are very close to their colleagues. Oh, yeah, yeah, they gotta be able to fit in this, this, or there. Or maybe different communities you're a part of. No, I need them to a part of this community, da, da 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 I'm going to be completely honest with you. When you get into a meaningful relationship, it changes you and it changes them. And other people's criteria can no longer be the benchmark. So you may find somebody that works for you, that makes you happy, that is good for you, that is healthy, there's no toxicity or drama, and they not may not be the expectation of your parents or your friends or community but as long as it's healthy as long as it makes you happy you have to learn how to step outside of yourself and say okay I'm going to be with that person now do not get this confused with you with somebody and your family and your friends are telling you please don't be with this person they are full of drama and you're like oh no you know they make me happy I don't, I don't think that that's what that is I think that that is toxic codependent see that I think that's what's happening there but I mean someone who truly makes you happy and you just feel like for some reason you know they don't fit into what you thought it was supposed to be but y'all share the same value system give them a chance and you're attracted to them and things like that give them a chance <laughs> give them a chance I'm telling you the person that you want is already around you also if you are young and I'll say you know 24 and under, 24, 23 and under. You could even say 25. If you are 25 to 23 and under, you do not need to have, you do not need to find the love of your life right now. You know, you do not need to find the love of your life at this moment. You can find the love of your right now life, but you do not have to put the pressure on yourself to find somebody that you're going to be with forever because I personally feel like you need to date around and you define what dating is. Sometimes dating is just talking to somebody, going on a couple dates or, you know, doing whatever you want to do, you know, but you have to experience people so that you don't make one of the toughest mistakes that a lot of people make that it works for a few people, but it doesn't really work for a lot of people is you end up getting with someone and you want to stay with them for a long time. You haven't had that many partners. You want to stay with them for a long time, but you don't know if they have the ability to grow with you. As we are changing in life, as we are growing and expanding, you want to make sure you, you get with a partner who is willing to grow, change, and expand with you. So the moment that you are ready to go on to the next iteration of you, they can respect that. They can be happy for because sometimes people will only love you where you're at. And I'm saying that to keep it real. So enjoy life. And I'm going to tell you the cheat code. The more you are happy, the more you are enjoying life, the more you take it easy and you do not put pressure on the relationships, the more people will want to lock you down. I don't know why it is. The more you put pressure, the more that, you know, I gotta find someone tomorrow, the less people want to do that. I, I don't know. I don't know why it is. I don't know. Maybe, if I had to guess, when you're looking for the quality of somebody that you want to be with, you want 
want someone who's fun, you want someone you have a good time with, and when you don't put pressure on something, you are those things, you're fun, you want to have a good time, and also you see that in other people too, when they don't put pressure in things, they're fun, you know, they don't, like, they're not asking for crazy things way too early in, you know, a relationship and things like that, but when you do put a lot of pressure onto things, what do you do? You have all of these expectations right now that have to be met, and that's a responsibility. If you're in the beginning of a relationship, everything is supposed to be fun. <laughs> you know, responsibilities, they come with time, but you don't have to be instantly responsible with someone. Now, some people feel like they're looking for someone like the, they're older than that age range I, get, I gave. Let's say they're in their 30s, 40s. Uh, I'm not even going to say 50s because I feel like 50s is a different, different thing, but 30s and 40s and they're like, look, I'm just ready. Who ready with me? And then they meet somebody who's like, we're ready. And if you have ever, you know, been a divorcee or you've ever been in long-term relationships, you know, or different relationships, you may kind of feel like, look, I, I know who I'm in, I who I am and I'm ready, you know, to get with the person that you want to get with. Okay. I mean, that's a different approach as well, but have fun on the way. Have fun on the way. I'm, I cannot stress this enough. Enjoy it. If you want to attract the right person, imagine the life that you would want to live with them and start living it by yourself first. And whoever can hang with you in that life, that'll let you know, okay, this person, I think they're going to be, they might be a keeper, you know? But then when you start to get into your 50s and your 60s and up, I think it's a whole different ball game. I think at this point, you don't need to do nothing but have fun. That's just like, that's just a requirement. All of those other things are suggestions. But once you get into your 50s, your 60s and up, have fun. You do not have to worry about no social obligations. You do not have to worry about somebody making an honest person out of you. You go, you lived your life. You lived by society standards. Now you going out here, you going to play, you going to do whatever you need to do. That's just the way I see it, you know, and if you happen to find somebody that you want to uh, have a longer commitment with, so be it. If not, cool. At this point, you probably have entire communities of people that um, kind of make up for the need of one specific partner. But again, I just gave you, I try to give you game, okay, when it comes to attracting the right person in your life. But at the end of the day, you know, as we talked about the different things, having good energy, sharing similar values, the most important thing has to be your self-care journey. You demonstrate to people how to treat you, point blank, period. You can't get past that. You demonstrate to people how to love you by how you love yourself, not what you're telling people. Hey, you need to love me this way. You need to love me that way. Because if you're telling someone to love you a certain way, but you yourself are not loving yourself a certain way, that's already a contradiction right there. You love yourself a certain way by living it out. For example, if you don't want someone to talk to you some type of way, and for those who don't know what that means, it means somebody talking to you crazy, and for some who don't know what that means, it means like someone is being aggressive with you or talking to you in a disrespectful way, right? Don't talk to nobody in a disrespectful way, you know? Don't say, don't talk to me crazy, and then you start talking to yourself crazy, like, oh yeah, I forgot to take that, pick up that cake yesterday, I'm this, I'm that, I'm da da da, you know, and you just start going on yourself, because that makes an impact on someone else, that makes someone else feel like, should I be questioning myself, or I don't feel as safe as I need to be here, and the same for someone else, especially if you got that good energy. Oh my gosh. People who are unhinged will not unhinge, not the dating app, unhinged, like not together. They will seek you out and they will vampire energy you to the next level. So you also need to protect your good energy too. If they're not giving the good energy back, this all goes into the self-love. You have to say, nope, can't. You can't be in this. 
folks who are, you know, going back and forth with someone, you got to make a hard decision. And that hard decision is, are you going to let this person prevent you from being happy? And that's very tough because love doesn't really matter when it comes to that. You can love somebody who is not good for you. So just because you love someone, that is not the parameter. That's not the benchmark to stay in an unhealthy relationship. So there's that. The second thing is, if you're very, very, very single and now you're ready to mingle, get out there. Whatever out there is for you, get outside, be outside, outside. You cannot find the person you're looking for hiding underneath your desk in your room or wherever it is that you go. Get out there. Sometimes it feels like the world is so big, you know, and you're like, you, you don't, you don't know. It's like, ah, like, where do I start? That's normal. But once you get into a groove of what you like, what makes you feel good, like what, what kind of energy you want to live in your life, you're going to be able to narrow it down. But you got to take those first steps where it's just like, oh, the world's really big. It'll narrow down eventually. And for those who are like, you know what? I'm going to go with the flow. And I'm going to be like, yes. <laughs>
sends you when they're hoping that they can find you, baby. Hello. And when you first meet this person or the person is already in your life and you're going to connect on a different level, how would you want your first impression to be? Would you want it to be very hard and serious? No. You want it light, airy, and fun. You want them to see their forever person in you, right? So we're going at it from that angle. Imagine that you are in their shoes and they're just trying to get close to you. They're trying to get close to you, trying to get close to you, just trying to get closer and closer to you. Is your life in order in the way it needs to be so that you can receive them? Are you no longer in a state of lack? Are you no longer in a state of desperation? Are you at a balanced place energetically so that when they see you, they see the best part of you, not a part of you that is not what you truly are, which is beauty, light, infinite hope, infinite hope, infinite love, okay? That's why I say you got to fall in love with yourself first, because when you do that, you reflect out to them a stronger energy and a stronger beam that connects you two together. <laughs> That's why the cheat code is you gotta fall in love with yourself. I've been trying to tell you, I've been trying to tell you since making them fall in love with you. <laughs> but you also have to make space in your life too, so RIP <laughs> to some stuff you gotta just let go. People, situations, circumstances, most importantly, mentalities. If you have been hurt before, if you have been in, you know, different kind of situations, whether that is love has always been troubling for you ever since your upbringing, you have to let that go and it's going to be scary. It's going to feel uncomfortable letting it go because you'll feel a little crazy. Wait, that's how I always thought about things, da 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 Let it go because if you really want something better, it will never come from satisfying the fears of that. It won't. You have to completely let it go and just be at peace and calm with the love that you get now. It doesn't require anything. That is conditional love. This is unconditional love. So let's go ahead and root that all together. Root it all together. Root it all together. Root it all together. And I know that, you know, we are for <laughs> grown-ups here, but I know sometimes some kids are listening say that love will always be in teenagers too. Love needs to start from yourself first. You're going to go on an entire journey in this life looking for it outside of you to only realize that it's always been in you. Babies, keep it in you. Keep your love, your energy, your focus in you and you will surround yourself with friends and all kinds of people who will always make you feel great. And when you come across people who don't make you feel great, do not get caught up in trauma, trauma. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go, babies. Let it go. Also, if anybody else would like to share maybe some wisdom to uh, younger people in the yeah. comment section, please share it. Because I know we all got a lot of stories in here. I know we all got a lot of stories in here. Baby. <sighs> if I just sit and reflect on my in my 20s what was I doing <laughs> but ultimately everything leads you back to true love and it's something that you work on every day baby you gotta date yourself you know when you date other people it should be like maybe one tenth of what you're giving yourself that doesn't mean give yourself a little bit people give you even less it means you do so much for yourself that even when you date other people, it's awesome and fun, but they're always going to try to build up to what you give to yourself. And the reason why you want to do that is because if ever for some reason it doesn't work out, you will not be devastated. You'll be hurt and it'll not feel so good, but you won't be devastated. That sense of devastation comes from that, you know, um, lack comes from the desperation, comes from the codependency. Release it, let it go. Fill yourself up. There's so much change. I feel like 2020 was like that feeling of just pause. Nothing is moving, you know, like, uh, it throws you off your routine. But 2021, look, everybody was just like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to be out here. For all my adults out there, the great resignation. Everybody leaving and transitioning and moving on to things that are serving them better. Um, and for everybody else. 
was just really having that time to think about what's important and not waste a second or a moment in life. You just get out there and start doing. And the universe is presenting many opportunities for you to be able to actually do that, to be actually to be able to actually go forth in these things that are better suited for you. And it gave you an opportunity to, to really sit and think like, what is best for you? What isn't during that 2020 year? Now it's time to get up and go and do not question it. Just let it flow. So we start our session off with a prayer. It is not a religious prayer, just a prayer to root us in our individual healing experience and bring us together as community and... <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you can see it today, because consent matters to have your permission to say a prayer. Okay, may I touch you? Okay. Breathe in and out. Dear Mother, Father, God, in all for the highest vibrational good only, please connect us to our highest intentions and validate information from our highest self only. Please release what we need to let go and embrace what allows us to grow. Let our journey encompass the lineages, traditions, religions, and spiritual paths that bring light out through us to share with others. I say all of this in the name of I am. Ashe, 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 let your Ashe just, ooh, okay. So just taking this moment to just work with this, work with this energy around you. No judgment here. Just moment with you. And I want you to start to think about the things that are actually important to you long term. What life do you want to live? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to see your life develop into? Is that moving or traveling? Is that being in one place, you know? What is it that is important to you and how can you connect to that? You already know you've had a whole year plus to really decide what that is. But now the opportunity is ripe. You might have already seen things pop up in your life that is pushing you onto your next vibrational path. And being able to accept that you are ready for that next level, you gotta inhale and exhale and move forward. You don't have to know how to or why or what to do next, but just trust that it is presented just trust that if it is presented to you, you are able, you are able to find your way through. Think of all of these times in your life where you had to go do something through uncertainty or you just don't know, you don't have the exposure, the experience, and you always work it out. And guess what? I feel like those experiences are the most rewarding when you go and do something that you have little background on and you show up and you just make shit happen. I think it's so beautiful and lovely how it just gives you that extra sense of confidence. Like you don't need to control everything. You don't need to know everything. You are allowed to have this abundant energy flowing in your life just because you're ready for it. And you had to have that opportunity to let things go. I talk about it all the time, being an emotional or an energetic order. An energetic order is someone who is not ready to let go of the things they need to let go to allow them to grow, but at the same time wants to manifest and bring things in. You cannot. Letting go sometimes feels uncomfortable. It feels strange. It feels like ah, 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 but it's a part of the process. So just accept that it is a part of the process. Release it. Allow any, you know, emotions that form to be normal emotions. You know, you don't got to be happy all the time. You don't got to be motivated all the time. You don't have to act like you have it all together. Everybody's going through shit from time to time. So just allow your body to process things. Don't put no judgment on it and move on when you're ready so that you can receive this new life. Okay. So I just want to work with the energy here a bit and I just want to open you up to receive what is for you. Sometimes when you don't know and blessings are coming into your life, it's even better because sometimes we wish for stupid shit. I'm so serious. <laughs> sometimes we wish for things that we think we need, but we really don't. But it's when we release and let the universe just send us something that is beautiful and for 
for myself if I needed to, you tell me. <laughs> but what I try to do is keep it open to the fact that I don't need to know what is going on every moment in the universe on my path. I just let it happen because I think I'm more receptive when I don't know everything. You know, I'm not going to overthink the shit. And so I'm just giving a little bit of advice if I could that just let go and go with the blow. So if you're ready for a new life, simply say you're ready for it and work from the highest in a life of peace, a life of calm, a life of happiness, a life of balance. You know, you can get into the details and the specifics, but sometimes I like to keep it open, you know, hold on, like a little surprise here or there. So just having that energy and that movement right there. Okay. So let me just work with this energy balancing you so that you're able to receive this beautiful life that you are so deserving of that is for your highest vibrational good, that is for your sense of relaxation, comfort, understanding, and patience. All of these things are very much so available to you whenever you need it, okay? Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, we'll go a little slower, inhale, exhale. It's really our perspective. 
perception of how we're perceiving what is coming back. Like, oh, I wanted a hamburger. But then you got a steak. Well, I wanted a hamburger. We really gonna, we're really gonna argue between a hamburger and a steak. And for those who are like, don't want that, you want it.
Self-compassion. 